Now that implementation of the Iran nuclear deal is underway, what lies ahead and what has really been accomplished toward the goal of preventing Iran from building a nuclear weapon? To better understand the potential impact of the deal, the Wilson Center invited one of the main players, U.S. Chief Negotiator Wendy Sherman, to discuss the fine points of the historic pact. That discussion provides the focus for this edition of Rewind. If you believed that Iran with a nuclear weapon was about the worst thing that could happen because they could project even more power in the world, they could create a deterrent uh, to those of us who think that they do a lot of nefarious things in the region, uh, destabilize the Middle East, are the largest uh, state sponsor of terrorism, as was just affirmed by uh, General Clapper in his intelligence uh, testimony uh, that just occurred. If you are concerned about all that they do in the world, having a nuclear weapon would make it much worse. <laughs> there are some who believe, and it is an intellectual debate one can have, that it would have been better to focus on their destabilizing actions and leave the nuclear weapons aside. It is an intellectual argument that can be had. I believe the President of the United States made the right decision. Ensuring that Iran not have a nuclear weapon was the first priority. It's not the only priority, because getting the nuclear weapon off the table was crucial so that they wouldn't be able to project more power into the region. Do you see the JCPOA as an arms control agreement that buys time by blocking Iran's access to weapons-grade nuclear material for 15 years? or? Is it a long-term solution to Iran's putative quest for a nuclear weapon? It is written as a long-term solution. Uh, it's not to say that Iran couldn't decide not to comply at some future mm. date. You know, we had endless conversations with each other. How will we know the next president of the United States won't stop this deal? How do we know the mm. next president of Iran won't stop this deal? So this is why this is a political agreement. It only is durable. A, if it's really good, which I believe it is, and secondly, if it remains in everybody's self-interest for it to be complied with. Countries pull out of treaties all of the time. We've pulled out of treaties. Russia has pulled out of treaties. We pulled out of the ABM Treaty. So treaties don't create an ironclad guarantee. The only thing that creates an ironclad guarantee to durability is that it remains in everybody's mm. self-interest uh, to do so. So if they decide to pull out of the NPT or kick out the inspectors, we know what that means instantaneously. And we can unilaterally slap on all of the sanctions, including the UN sanctions, and we can decide if we want to take military action. Do you think that the, um, the boundaries for the, the deal with the Iranians, I know from the United States perspective it was to prevent breakout, but from the Iranian perspective, were they, um, were they trying to push boundaries beyond what they need for civili civilian nuclear infrastructure, or were they trying to push the boundaries of the deal to get themselves still as close to breakout as they could within something that was acceptable to the United States? It was when we began this negotiation about two months. Now it is at least a year. Um, they didn't accept that definition, nor our objective. But they understood we would not do a deal without reaching that objective. Um, I think that they have a whole infrastructure in their nuclear energy world of scientists and people who are engaged in this. So they were facing not wanting to be, in their words, not mine, humiliated and have to undo everything. Um, are they hedging their bets? I don't think we know. How did you deal with the issue of breakout capacity as opposed to breakout? Once the Iranians can start under the agreement producing more centrifuges again, how, how does one uh, deal with the, the issue that they might be on the verge even if they don't make a decision to go beyond? For 15 years, they really can't be on the verge. <laughs> Uh, because the stockpile remains too small and the percentage of how far they can go in enriched uranium remains too small. So for 15 years, that's an easy answer. After 15 years, it gets more difficult, but uh, because of the surveillance and monitoring, uh, there, there, it will be 
as Ernie Moniz says, and he is the expert here, Secretary Moniz, they would have to create an entire supply chain covertly, which is nearly impossible to do. Uh, so, and remember, we're going to have 24-7 access. We're going to have electronic seals, video in some places. So the eyes on this process are quite extraordinary. There, there is no 100% ironclad guarantee, but as I said, everyone's going to be eyes on. And look, although because we have a primary embargo, there aren't likely to be Americans working in Iran, uh, but there will be foreign subsidiaries of American companies, and there are some license carve-outs uh, in uh, uh, airlines, the most obvious one. Um, you're going to have a different set of eyes on what's happening in Iran than have ever existed before. For more on this and other security topics and related issues, visit wilsoncenter.org.